Talk 365 TV's Talking Wellness is brought to you by Brain Rehab Clinic with wellness team expert, Dr. John Hatch. Hey everybody, welcome to our Talking Wellness series. As promised, we have Dr. John Hatch up here in studio again. Hi, Dr. Hatch. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for coming up again. I am so excited for today because almost two years ago, can you believe? Almost two years ago, yeah. you came up here. It was the first chance I had to meet you. Mm -hmm. You had written a book about neuroplasticity mm -hmm. and functional neurology, and little did I know that you were going to change my life. So I had injured my brain two years ago. I fell down, I hit the back of my head, and I didn't realize how far down the path I had gone into having a concussive response. I didn't even know what that was. I wasn't functioning or navigating anywhere near what was my normal. So I wanted to bring you back up to talk about functional neurology neuroplasticity and the ways that you're able to help people with all kinds of problems that they may not be connecting like I was to a brain injury. Let's start with functional neurology. What is that? The simplest way to understand functional neurology is just to understand that in order to change the brain, you have to activate its systems. The brain works on sensory input into the cortex and then shoots it out and your brain adapts or reacts. Mm -hmm. We only have control of 10% of that. 90% is involuntary. So when you look at functional neurology, the key in functional neurology is to understand what part of the brain is working great, what part isn't working and is the connecting pathways functioning or not? I think that 10% versus 90% is such an interesting fact about functional neurology because you don't realize how much brain power it takes to do things like breathe or grow your hair, grow your nails. I loved you mentioned in a presentation you were doing and you're like, you don't think about, ooh, my nail, I want it to grow a little more to the right or I want this acne to go away. It's so fascinating to me and I've had my eyes open so wide as to why so many people are struggling and they can't find answers because no pill, no supplement, no diet is going to change the brain. Mm -hmm. You have to rehab the brain through exercises. So let's talk a little bit about neuroplasticity, what that is, what it means, and then how we get it. Okay. Okay. And neuroplasticity, it's neuro meaning the brain and plastic meaning it's moldable and changeable and you can literally connect different pathways. I mean, for some people, they can't do a finger tap, but neuroplasticity is the ability to train the brain to learn it so you can do it without it. It's kind of like piano playing, it's kind of like learning a language. Those are forms of neuroplasticity, but we don't realize that the gut also needs neuroplasticity. The sleep patterns in the brain need neuroplasticity. Everything in the cortex is ran based on how each system is interlocking and interchanging with one another. So when you're looking at neuroplasticity, uh, you have to activate the brain. Again, medication goes to a certain area of the brain, they're trying to hit receptors, but there still needs activation to connect pathways together. And that's what neuroplasticity is all about. The ability to connect one system to another system so you can have a better outcome in that system. We were talking earlier about research showing through video of the brain that the neurons, it will repair itself. Uh -huh. The neurons will go around a dead neuron and find the other one, but again, supplements, diet, willpower, meditation, therapy, none of those things are going to make that happen. It takes the exercises to ignite that area of the brain that is not functioning correctly and to make those connections happen so then you can function right and you can then implement what you're learning from meditation or from spirituality or from your therapist that is advising you to do. Let's talk a little bit about people, what they're suffering with and then how it relates to brain problems. Yeah, and you said it best. You said the brain repairs itself. A lot of times I hear people, it can heal. Well, if I could heal or will myself, I don't think I would be bald. I think <laughs> I would have hair. Right? Again, you can't will yourself to certain limitations that the brain has, mm -hmm. whether it be genetic, but again, genes are expressed or not expressed or dormanted via activation of the brain. So when you look at genetic imbalances, when you look at neurological imbalances, disorders, and especially the whole autistic spectrum disorder, the anxiety, bipolar, schizophrenia, the psychosomatic or psychological imbalances, again, their 10% can't override the 90%. Mm -hmm. Now, does the 10% influence the 90%? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It does every day, all day, and so the more positive we are, the better, yes. But there's other pathways that have to be running all the time mm -hmm. that make it so much easier to be positive. Yeah. It's so much easier to not be in a stressful state because people think stress and they think psychological. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not stressed, I'm fine. But they yeah. forget that 
the gut can have stress, the joints can have stress, the sleep can create stress response, all of these different functions that create stress. And again, no amount of supplementation or medication or diet changes is gonna create the plasticity unless you connect neuron to neuron via activation. Talk about the time and the timeline for neuroplasticity. And that's a hard thing for people. People want it change. You, most people want it change and they change now. And that's why it's hard for people to lose weight because they have to diet as long as they do or exercise as long as they do. I feel really bad for those that have dieted a year and exercised a year yeah. and no change. Yeah. That always tells me that's a brain. Every single time, because um. you're doing what it takes, neurologically it should happen unless the brain is protecting it from something. Remember, mm. the first law of nature is survival. The brain will do everything it can to survive. So no matter what you're doing to it, it will survive and it'll find a way to survive. Mm -hmm. And so what we see in neuroplasticity, to, for the brain to say, all right, I'm done trying to survive this way. You've altered yourself enough that I'm willing to survive this way. I kind of look at that, that that's that three to six month window of consistent brain therapies and activations. And these, the great thing is, is these are done at home. This yeah. isn't something that's done at my office all the time or at a center somewhere. This is done at home, continually activating the brain. Mm -hmm. And three to six months later, that brain gets in on board with what the input it is that given and it feels the most safe in this situation. Again, it's creating hierarchy. It's telling yourself, hey, you're in this stress. I need to swell the legs. I need to do these things. These are responses that the brain is telling it to do. Now let's talk about the gyro stim because this was a game changer for me and weight loss. Well, that's the thing that was so incredible is with your system, all your eye tests were getting better. The one test that wasn't improving at the level we wanted was your balance score. Mm -hmm. You still had a posterior center of pressure that makes you feel in a constant tectal stress response. No matter what you're doing and then try to sleep, you're still in a tectal response. By looking at that balance and once we uh, got the gyro stem and we started pitching you forward and activating the correct canals and the correct sequence, we were able to literally bring your posture back to neutral, stabilize your system, and your brain was no longer in a stress response, and then yeah. you watched the weight just go whoop. It shit. was insane. So for a whole month, I was really good about my exercises and just dropping weight. I dropped 15 pounds like it was nothing. It was, I mean, I did still work out. I was doing intermittent fasting. I was mm -hmm. doing the work, but all of a sudden, two plus two was equaling four. And then I got busy, and I didn't get down there as much. So all of a sudden, I felt it again. And that tightness in my hands and my legs, and my heart start to pound. And I was like, oh, no. And I realized the gyro stem is the reason I lost the weight. Let's talk about why it's so special to have that here in Utah, because there's, it's like only a few on the planet. Yes, there's only 22. I mean, I think they're still making them. So there's one just put in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the only one in the state of Utah. And again, its purpose is to activate canals to rehab the central vestibular imbalances or balance issues or perceptual imbalances that again, as we talked about, the vestibular system is one of the largest parasympathetic functions in the brain. That's why when people get too much roller coasters or feel uneasy, they vomit, right? And again, it's one of the major pathways that run while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. There's only a few pathways that are running while you're sleeping. The other one's dormant so that you can sleep. The vestibular system is constant. It's so important because it's the only thing constantly fighting gravity. So a lot of vets suffering with PTSD have finally found relief through a gyro stem. Mm -hmm. Who else is able to be helped with that amazing equipment as well as other things that so you do? A lot of the things I'm seeing is uh, vertigo, balance issues, maldebarkation syndrome, where it's basically land sickness. They go on a cruise or go, air, go on a plane and then they've been sick and nauseous. They can't walk down aisles at the grocery store because it gives them the perception that they're rotating or moving. Mm. These types of things are very helpful, especially post-concussion syndrome. Mm -hmm. I mean, all head trauma has a rotational vestibular breakdown. So without the rehab of the, of the gyro stem or the, the vestibular system, you're never gonna get the outcome that you seek with a type of head trauma that you're dealing with. Wow. To get that final, some people have said, will come in even years after a head trauma and done all this therapy and they're still suffering just a little. And then we activate that, that brain through the gyro stem, balance everything, and we see the symptoms change. Let's quickly touch on kids because so many kids out there are being diagnosed or misdiagnosed or labeled as ADD, ADHD, there's autism, there's the spectrum, and not that all of those things don't exist, 
but a lot of those things exist because of an injury to the brain. These mm -hmm. kids are hyper and having fun. How many of them just fell down and hit their head? Yep. A lot of times we put these labels on them, so it gives us an understanding of what someone might be going through, or mm -hmm. how can we help them if they have this label or that label, but that spectrum is just getting broader and broader and broader because there's no amount of medication or, or supplements that's gonna change that plasticity in the brain, mm -hmm. so you have to activate it right. Mm -hmm. And no two kids are the same. There's so many other variables going on in the brain that people don't take all that into consideration. So when a patient comes in, every walk of life, adult, child, infant, to those that are right at the end of Alzheimer's and dementia, mm -hmm. you can still make changes to the brain by activating it correctly and finding exactly what they need. If you feel like you're navigating great, but you'd like to be better, so maybe you're not experiencing things at this level, but you're in sports, that is also a category that you treat. Well, yeah, and just in high-functioning high uh, athleticism, you are only as strong as your core. Everyone says that in the health world, right? I was a, a personal trainer for seven years. But in my world, what I've learned now about the brain is you're only as strong as your balance system. Uh -huh. So the stronger your balance system is, the faster you go. If you have a posterior center pressure, and maybe you don't have sleep issues and don't have anxiety, you also can't run as fast. Wow. In order to run, you have to get your brain to lean forward. But if your brain doesn't like to lean forward, you actually won't run faster. Hand-eye coordination, control, function, these are all athletic sports things that are controlled by the brain. That's and so, so awesome. finding that is so much fun. How many professional athletes use the gyrostim? Hundreds. So if you are in a world of athletics and you also want to better your life in that way, this is the place to go. So obviously, if you're excited about this information, if you're struggling with any of these things, if a loved one or a child of yours is struggling and you have been to doctors, you've had tests, you've been given a clean bill of health and told you should be fine and yet, you know what, you're not fine. Whatever stage you're in, give them a call, set up an appointment. There is a number of webinars and information that you can find both on your website and on ours and on our Facebook page that you can get more information or give them a call and get down there and just get in and see what's going on because trust me, they will have the answer, which is the best feeling. It is. So Dr. Hedge, thanks for coming up again. You're welcome. Always thanks, a pleasure. Always. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on Talk 365 TV right after this.